that is minimum number of brahmas. So before initiation, devotees have to prepare for this. They have to every day, they have, before initiation, they have to practice chanting and they have to strictly follow the rules. Now, in, in ISKCON society, it's become more strict about getting initiation. We want devotees who come and get initiated that they will always stay devotees, they won't go away. Sometimes people come, they get initiation, go away, and never see them again. So that's not very good. We want people to come, get initiated, we want them to become more, more active in Krishna's service. Mm -hmm. So, before initiation, we have some things which devotees have to do. One of the things they have to do is they have to attend the ISKCON Disciple Course. So this ISKCON Disciple Course, this is all over the world and is, is conducting the people who give the course in all the different languages. Just like in Malaysia, we have many languages, some people are speaking Basa, some people are speaking Tamil, some people are speaking Chinese, some are English, so many different languages just in Malaysia. So everybody has to be educated, everybody has to be taught that the uh, principles of the, they have to learn this this concept of course what it means to be a devotee and we have to learn also what uh, what are the qualifications of the spiritual teacher and what are the qualifications of a disciple. And then we have to also learn about ISKCON society. How is this society managed and who is in charge? And we have to learn about who, what is the purpose of initiation. And of course we have to learn about the position of Srila Prabhupada that Srila Prabhupada is the founder of the society and he is the guru for all the devotees. There are many spiritual masters in this con. Now more than 100 people are initiated. Now, 
But the purpose of the initiation is to bring us closer to Srila Prabhupada and coming to Srila Prabhupada, we will also come to the other members of the disciplic succession. So initiation is to connect us firmly in Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet that we will understand that in ISKCON, in the ISKCON society, Prabhupada is the Shiksha Guru for everyone. He gives the instructions. So his books are very important for us. And he, Srila Prabhupada, while he gives instruction, he is not physically present, so he does not give the, the initiation. The initiation is done by other people who represent Srila Prabhupada. So it, it is the duty of all of the devotees to represent Srila Prabhupada in the course of our activities and our daily affairs. So, the, so today we are giving the first initiation, which is the initiation into the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. And the second initiation is not so important. That is where people are given Gayatri Mantra to chant. So the first initiation is in the chanting of the Holy Name and we want to understand how to avoid the offenses in chanting the Holy Name. So first offense is to blaspheme the devotees who dedicate their lives to propagating the holy name. It's important for us to always have nice relationships with the devotees. We should be friends with the devotees. We should not fight and quarrel. Of course, this is Kali Yuga. And in Kali Yuga, very common people argue, fight with each other. In the home, even husband and wife hardly can live together peacefully without quarreling and fighting with each other. And brother and sisters, they will also quarrel and fight with each other. This is Kali, that is Kali Yuga. But we want to keep Kali away. We want to just be in Krishna consciousness. So how to avoid quarreling and offending devotees? You want to avoid, you should see the good. Talk some good things about the devotees. Don't talk good things only about yourself. Talk 
good about others. And see the faults in ourselves. That's the first offense in chanting Hare Krishna. It is called the mad elephant offense. If we bring a big mad, mad elephant, then it will trample everything, it will knock over all the banana trees, it will stamp all the flowers, it will do a lot of damage. And our spiritual advancement can be ruined by offending the Vaishnava. Then the second offense is to consider the names of demigods like Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. We respect the demigods, we offer our respects to them, but at the same time we understand they are not the supreme. We offer our respects to Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma and the other devas and we seek their blessings. Please help me to be a nice devotee of Lord Krishna. The third defense is to disobey the orders of the spiritual teachers. So spiritual teacher, everyone's spiritual teacher is Srila Prabhupada. So we have to follow Srila Prabhupada's instructions. Every day in the Mongol Arti, we sing the Guru Vastika. And the last verse of the Guru Vastika says, by the mercy of the spiritual master, we get the mercy of Krishna. And without the mercy of the spiritual master, then we won't get the mercy of Krishna. <laughs> Then the fourth offense is to blaspheme Vedic literature or literature in pursuance of the Vedic version. This means you have to you have to read the books, or if you don't read the books yourself, you have to hear other people read or hear other people give classes. It's important for us to hear regularly. When Prabhupada took initiation from his guru, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, Oh yes, I have noted him. He likes to hear. So this is a good qualification to advance in Krishna consciousness. 
தான் முக்கியமான கொள்கைகள் நம்ம ஆன்மீகத்தில் முன்னேறுவது If you like to hear, if you like to read the books, you will never go away. You will never give up Krishna consciousness. Fifth defense is to consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be imagination. An example is, but someone may hear that by one time chanting Hare Krishna, it can destroy all of our sinful reactions. So someone may say, oh, I don't think so. How is it possible? Just one time chanting the Holy Name and you could destroy all the karma? No, I don't believe it. So that is the offense. So, Without offense, it's very powerful and it can destroy all of the sinful reactions. Then the sixth offense is to give some interpretation of the holy name. We interpret the name just like Sanskrit words can have many different meanings. So Krishna can mean black. So we think, oh, black, something mysterious. Oh, we cannot know. We don't know it. So then you think, oh, Krishna cannot be known because Krishna means black and black is something mysterious, so we cannot know Krishna. So this is an offense to think like that. Don't think like that. Understand the meanings given by the Acharyas. And then the second offense is to commit sinful activity on the strength of chanting Hare Krishna. Just like when we think, oh, there's a party tonight. Oh, we'll go there to party and we'll eat some things and we'll drink something also. And anyway, we'll chant Hare Krishna tomorrow to make up. Yeah. Oh, last night I drank a little alcohol. Oh, today I'll chant two more rounds to make up. So this is a fence if you do that. It's like the elephant taking a bath and then throwing the dirt all over its body. Our people go to Mayapur, they go to Ganga, they take bath in the Ganga and then they come back and they do all bad things again. So this is offense. Don't do like that. Then the eighth offense is to consider chanting Hare Krishna to be one of the auspicious ritualistic activities offered in the Vedas as karma, kanda. 
fruitive activities. So chanting Hare Krishna is not Karma Kanda. We're not doing Karma Kanda activities. We're Bhakti yogis. We're not Karma Kandis. Right? Karma Kandi is material activities. Bhakti Yoga is spiritual activities. So we want everyone to do Bhakti Yoga. We want to chant Hare Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. Then the ninth offense is to instruct the glories of the holy name to faithless people. Now sometimes people think, oh, maybe we shouldn't tell people to chant Hare Krishna. They think of, they don't have any faith in chanting, so we shouldn't tell them to chant Hare Krishna. No, we tell everyone chant Hare Krishna. We go, we have Radhi Atra, we're chanting Hare Krishna, we're telling everyone chant the holy name. They're not devotees, they have no faith, but we tell them chant Hare Krishna. They don't have any faith, but if they chant Hare Krishna, it will be good for them. And gradually, we will give them faith in the Holy Name. Mm, gradually, we will teach them, you're not the body, you're the soul. We will teach them, you have to control your mind and senses. We will tell them, you're not the supreme controller, you're a tiny servant of the supreme. And we will give them prasadam and gradually they will get more faith. But in the beginning, everybody should chant Hare Krishna. And gradually they will explain the glories of the Holy not immediately. We won't tell them the glories of the Holy Name immediately, but after they've got more faith, then we will tell them the glories of the And then the tenth offense, not to have complete faith and to maintain material attachment, even after receiving many instructions. So, you have to give up your material attachments, right? Initiation means I'm giving up all my material attachments. Just like if you get in the boat and you row the boat, you row the boat, you don't go anywhere because your rope, your boat is still tied to the side. Then you wasted all your effort. So I have to take the rope, undo the rope, Take the boat free and then you row the boat. Then you can 
cross. But if we're holding on, no, I don't want to go. We're chanting Hare Krishna and we're holding on to the material things. We won't go anywhere. So we have to let go of all of our material attachments. A devotee is called sadhu. Some, oh no, the devotee, well, we talk about shastra. Shastra is a, a sword. And Shastra can cut, and it's meant to cut the attachment to the material world. Shastra. No, no, you took initiation from that guru, he's your guru, you don't. You, no, 
No, because we're all members of ISKCON and we're going to hear from the other spiritual teachers also. But you only take initiation from one person, but you have other Shiksha Gurus. Just like we said, Prabhupada is Shiksha Guru, but there are other also living Shiksha Gurus who you can also hear from and who you can take advice from. So understand what's happening when you get initiation, you're being initiated as a member of ISKCON. You're not just being initiated as a disciple of the Guru, but you're being initiated into the society. And as I said, in our society, we have many spiritual teachers. But we are all one family. Mm -hmm. Just like the Sri Vaishnavas, in Sri Vaishnavism, you know, oh, yeah, I'm Sri Vaishnava, oh, they're Sri Vaishnava. They don't say who's their guru, they'll just say Sri Vaishnavas. They're all followers of Ramanuja. Ramanuja was a thousand years ago, but they're all following Ramanuja. <laughs> In the same way, we are all following our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada. In the same way, your children and your children's children, they will all be followers of Srila Prabhupada. Is it clear? Any questions? Anybody? Yeah, and sometimes you have to chant on clicker. Sometimes some countries they won't allow, they don't like to see people do this chanting on beats and stuff. So at some places it's more just like driving a car, better you use a clicker, don't use your beats. You know? So yes, you can use the clicker. It's a thing with the beats. But generally we like to use the beats because they're given by the guru. Guru didn't give you a clicker. Hare 
Prabhu actually came to Krishna consciousness more in Todu than here. Just this morning you saw me talking with Nilamadava Prabhu from uh, Todu, from Bhutta, up in Butterworth, Sidran Jaya, our big temple there. So Jai Kumar Prabhu was involved. He was brought in to help them repair the roof in their temple because they have a big building up in Butterworth at Sibran Jaya. And he was brought in to help them repair the roof. And so at that time, uh, Krishna, uh, is it Katamrita? Isn't it Krishna Katamrita? Prabhu, he's one of the main managers there. He's also one of the directors in the Ames Medical College. And so he preached to Prabhu there and he encouraged him in Krishna consciousness. So he's taking the initiation somehow here today. His job requires him moving around a lot. So Prabhu, what are the four regulator principles? No eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. And everyday chanting? Alright. So your name is uh, Jagannath Das. <laughs> Prabhu is very attracted to the worship of Lord Jagannath. He already has Jagannath deities in their home. Yes. With his mother. mother Jagannath Das Prabhu Ki. Yeah. Alright, then next we have Prabhu uh, uh, Sharan Raj. Sharan Raj Prabhu. Okay. 
And every day change the? So, we give you the name Sandini Devi Dasi. Sandini means the Krishna's energy in the spiritual world by which he maintains the whole the creation. Alright, and then Mataji. Mataji's name is uh, Santa Kumari. Yeah.
arrivo Been coming to the temple for many years. Hare Krishna. Christine Bhattaji is one of our first ever Chinese devotee. Actually, her husband is the one who was quite favorable, who came seeking. He saw Mukuta Prabhu and from there she was hanged on and uh, she is a very favorable devotee. And from here, from through her, we also did a global Chinese conference. Okay? Now we have, uh, you know, she's very closely associated to Yasuda Mai, right? Yes. Thank you. Yasuda Mai is uh, her spiritual guide. You know, she's been very upright with her, teaching her, showing the path. Is going on the, uh, through the web communication. So we wish you well. So, what are the four principles? No meditating, no helping, no intoxication, no religious And the religious entry? Alright. So, your name is Kishori Devi Dasi. Kishori means with young girl. Kishori means the servant of Krishna. And then we have Bala Chandra Prabhu. Bala Chandra Prabhu. Bala Chandra Prabhu. Prabhu Kala Mala Namu Dinga. Okay. 